A few months ago, I picked up a used mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro to use it for college work and other intensive tasks like video and photo editing on the go. But is this six-year-old MacBook still worth getting in 2018? The model I have and I'll be testing in this video is the mid-2012 MacBook Pro non-retina with a 2.5GHz Core i5-3210M and originally with 8GB of RAM has been upgraded to the maximum 16GB of RAM. It also came with a 500GB hard drive which I quickly swapped out for an SSD. Also before I dive in, if you find this video useful don't forget to hit thumbs up and please do subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. The metal unibody of this Mac is on par with modern MacBooks in my opinion, and looks really slick. It's featuring a bright backlit keyboard and very tactile chiclet keys. The only thing to be aware of is that it is slightly thicker than newer generations, however that doesn't come without some advantages, such as a much wider selection of ports on the side, so you don't have to worry about buying loads of expensive dongles that you'll just lose. You'll find a MagSafe charging port, which I really wish they would have kept on newer models since it's really a great feature as well as an ethernet port, a Firewire 800 port, a mini display port, two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and here's the kicker, an SD card slot. This is when Apple actually had the head screwed on and wasn't a company that sells dongles. No, seriously. This was the first model to have USB 3.0 ports introduced and two is fine for most use cases. The ethernet port is also a great port to have built in and a mini display port comes in more than handy when hooking up a projector or an external display quickly although I would definitely invest in a VGA adapter. On the right side, you'll find a disk drive, which is not found on any newer MacBooks, but let's be honest, I've never used it once, and I'm considering getting a bracket to install another SSD in there. But the biggest concern you're probably having with buying an older MacBook is whether the performance is still up to scratch. Well, this MacBook supports the latest version of macOS, which while this video is being made is High Sierra, and the i5 has no trouble cutting through basic apps, as well as web browsing being lightning fast. As to be expected, especially coupling it with an SSD to run everything off. Things like Microsoft Office and video streaming is also a breeze on this machine. If you're looking at running more complex programs like photo editing tools or any Adobe software, then you'll be fine for the most part, as I was really surprised at how well programs like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom and GIMP ran, and how little problems there were. I was able to edit an entire 1080p video on the laptop in my average time, and apart from the occasional patience needed when adding some titles or editing some video effects, it was completely usable and wasn't frustrating to use. However, that might be helped by the fact that my system has the extra 8GB of RAM. Video rendering in Premiere Pro was about 15 minutes for a 3 minute video, which is longer than the 4 minutes it took on my beastly Windows desktop, but it was again not unbearable. Although as for Final Cut, and the times I have used it, it's been slightly smoother than Premiere Pro, although I didn't try rendering any videos through it. To get an idea of how well this Mac handles gaming, I tried Minecraft, the original Tomb Raider and Firewatch, and well, it's fair to say you can't expect much from the integrated Intel graphics. Minecraft was surprisingly good though, running at a smooth 60fps and at low render distance and fancy graphics, although handled busy servers with a bit of a challenge. Firewatch ran pretty badly to be honest, and even with the settings cranked all the way down, I wasn't able to get much joy. It was holding around 20 FPS, which in my opinion is just not really playable. However, Tomb Raider did prevail. With low graphics settings, I was able to maintain a smooth FPS. It's just about the only era of games you can run smoothly. I even tried Team Fortress 2, with just about every setting I could find turned down, and even installed a config for very low end PCs, but I just couldn't get a usable frame rate. So if you're really into gaming on the move and want something reliable, this might not be a great choice. My favourite games to play that run well are 2D games such as Super Meat Boy, Binding of Isaac and World of Goo, just to name a few. As I mentioned earlier, I quickly installed an SSD to replace a stock 500GB mechanical hard drive, which was just awfully slow and booting up the system took over a minute, which is never fun when I'm out trying to get work done. Apps took a while to load sometimes, and even just waking it up from sleep mode would require me to wait. I installed a 240GB SSD, which is an upgrade I would recommend anyone to do. And for a very affordable price, you can completely transform your PC's performance. After doing so, it now only takes around 20 seconds to boot up, and apps open really quickly, which means it doesn't really lag behind any of the most recent Macs. The upgrade process couldn't be easier, and there are plenty of tutorials online. 
and you can also replace your disk drive with another bigger hard drive if you needed some extra storage that you weren't running programs from. Quickly touching on battery life, this Mac lasts around 6 hours if you're just using it for light work like web browsing and word processing. Although it will be quickly eaten into if you up the workload and try any gaming or video editing. I'm really happy though with it and for average days it easily lasts all day. You can still buy battery replacements too, but be careful as none of them will be official Apple ones. So in conclusion, is it worth picking up an older MacBook? Well, the performance is more than enough for most of the casual tasks I need it for when doing college work and editing photos on, and surprised me just how well it handles video editing and is totally usable if I need to edit some videos while on the move. I really have no complaints on the performance, and considering the used prices for these, it was really worth it for me. I don't find myself gaming much on the move, and the occasional casual 2D platformer type game is easily achievable. There are many things to argue that this Mac has better features than the newer ones, considering the amount of ports built in, and the fact that the Apple logo lights up, because, you know, let's be honest, that's the real reason you want a Mac. So hopefully this video was helpful, and if you can find one for a good price, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching, if you did stick around this long into the video, I'd love it if you subscribed and gave the video a rating, it really helps me out, and I'll see you guys in the next one, goodbye.